Throughout history, Cadillac has been known for offering copious amounts of American-style luxury. However, a lot of enthusiasts tend to forget that the company also has a rich history in racing, over 70 plus years to be exact. And today, I'm at Virginia International Raceway, also known as VIR, with two of Cadillac's latest, smallest track we weapons. This is the 2022 Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. And unlike the regular V series that they introduced last year, this Blackwing mo wing model has a lot more power under the hood, 472 horsepower horsepower to be exact. And as you can see, I've got two of them here. This is the 10 speed automatic and of course the more enthusiast friendly six speed manual version. Now Cadillac claims that this latest Blackwing versions are the most track capable performance sedans that the company has ever built. So today let's find out if that's truly the case. So in case you guys are a little confused on what the CT4V Blackwing is, this is essentially a direct replacement for the old ATS-V, because unlike the old CT4V, the one last year, under the hood we have significantly more power, and we also have the same engine that was powering the old ATS-V. This is the company's 3.6 liter direct injection V6 with two turbochargers strapped to it. Cadillac did make some revisions this year, it's got a revised intake manifold that breathes air a little bit better, it's got titanium connecting rods. If you guys go for the manual transmission model and this vehicle makes 472 horsepower that's roughly eight more ponies than last year or the previous generation and you still have 445 pound feet of torque so this power figure is a really nice upgrade and it also has more power than most of the competitors cadillac has actually repositioned this vehicle to compete with cars like the m2 the cla45 and audi's rs3 which are technically a class below the old atsv which competed with the m3 and m4 now of course you get a choice between either this model here which has a 10 speed on automatic or a six-speed manual. Both of them are rear-wheel drive. Both of them have limited slip differentials. Cadillac claims that the manual will get to 60 in around 4.2 seconds. The automatic will do it in around 3.9 seconds. They both have a top speed of around 189 miles an hour. So these are some serious track weapons. Now, in case you guys are wondering, fuel economy is rated at 15 in the city, 23 on the highway. You better be sure to put premium gas in this car. And even though this generation is much larger than the old ATS-V, weight didn't go up that much. It still weighs in at just under 4,000 pounds, around 30 980 pounds. Now shutting the hood and looking at the styling of the CT4V Blackwing, you can see unlike the regular CT4, this has a look to it that's definitely going to attract the eyes of the enthusiast, but it's also a little bit restrained. It's not super shouty that it's a high performance vehicle. You can see the front fascia is slightly changed, of course, for the Blackwing model. You have this unique grill, which Cadillac says they've redesigned uh, the actual intakes in the grill to funnel in more air and it kind of accelerate the air through the, the intercooler, of course, through the radiator. You can see the grill inserts, the mesh style inserts almost look like they're the V logos. You have these uh, Cadillac signature art and science design themes with these full LED headlights. You can see there's an LED daytime running light, LED turn signals. Although the low beam appears to be LED, the high beam almost looks like it's an incandescent. There are no fog lights, of course. This particular one here has a carbon fiber exterior one package at the front that gives you the front splitter. And you have these little winglets here, which Cadillac says is all part of the functional downforce. This vehicle at 180 miles an hour will basically give you 169 pounds of downforce, which should help this vehicle stick to the road uh, really well. It's something that we'll be, of course, trying out out on the track here at VIR. You can see the hood has a slight bulge to it, although the old generation ATS had functional heat extractors. You can see Cadillac did away with that. Uh, for this new generation and I kind of wish that they gave us back that little feature also I'm noticing with all the carbon fiber this vehicle has they don't offer a carbon fiber roof and nor do they offer carbon fiber mirror caps you can get these black painted and you can also get a standard sunroof if you guys want to kind of break up the white that this one has now looking at the side profile let's talk about the wheels just like the old ATS-V 18 inch wheels are the largest wheel that you can get Cadillac offers a choice between three different wheels this is the mid option with the graphite finish a five spoke design you have 255 35s in the front, fatter 275s at the back. I actually think the wheels, I'm, I applaud Cadillac for going with a smaller wheel. They wanted, of course, to go with that to give you better ride quality and better track performance. But I do think that the spacing of the wheel needs to come out a little bit more. It just looks like it's inset too far into the body of the vehicle. Cadillac claims that the fenders are a little bit wider. This vehicle is around 20 millimeters wider than the standard V-Series car. You have some functional vents over here. This particular one here in the white looks really good, of course, with the graphite painted wheels. And you also have some more carbon fiber here on the rocker panels. That's part of the carbon fiber two package. This car has roughly $7,000 worth of additional carbon fiber 
fiber that really makes the look of this car even more aggressive. Now in terms of the dimensions, this car is around 187 inches long. Uh, its wheelbase is unchanged at 108.9 inches long. This is around two inches longer than the old ATS-V, which is why this car is interesting because it's about the same size, a little bit shorter than a BMW M3, the current generation, although Cadillac doesn't want you to compare this to an M3, they want you to compare it to an M2. Now let's look at the rear of this vehicle because how could we not talk about this massive wing? This massive table size wing with the ducktail spoiler almost. This is part of the carbon fiber one package. This actually adds functional downforce uh, to the vehicle when you guys are traveling at high speeds. It's gonna help push the vehicle down onto the road, which is very important when you're at those high speeds. And just like the regular CT4V, uh, you have this interesting shape to the trunk lid and you have part of the carbon fiber two package, this carbon fiber rear diffuser along with the quad outlet exhaust. The exhaust system is specially tuned, of course, for the V model. I know you guys are curious. Let's fire this thing up so you can hear how it sounds. So that active exhaust definitely sounds good. We'll talk about that more as we go into the uh, test drive. Now opening up the trunk, you can see the trunk capacity, Cadillac says, measures around 10.2 cubic feet. You have a 60-40 uh, fold-down split rear seat back, which is really nice. And then underneath the floor here, no temporary spare tire. You do have a little bit of storage, but overall, it is relatively practical, but the trunk is a little bit on the small side considering the size of this vehicle. So the new CT4V Blackwing is definitely very attractive looking on the outside, but what about the interior? This is still a $60,000 plus luxury sedan, so you expect Cadillac to give you a nice interior to complement the exteriors. And as you can see, this white exterior is complemented by this really nice looking sky cool gray two-tone interior. These seats are the fully upgraded Recaro seats with mini custom perforated leather. This are, these seats are $5,000 extra, but they are heated and cooled. They're 18-way adjustable with two-person memory, and they also offer a power lumbar massage, which is really unexpected in the segment. Getting inside and looking at this cabin at a glance, you can see it looks pretty much from identical to the regular CT4V, uh, the non-Blackwing version, but you can see that new steering wheel kind of jets out. It's very interesting and more aggressive looking. When I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, and you can see there's a new fully digital display here in the instrument panel. And I also wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see it's actually red accented, so I'm not entirely sure if all the Blackwing models have this red accented key, but it is a very nice addition. Now you can see this one here is the 10 speed auto. The button to fire up the engine is right here where you'd expect it to be. And you can see when you start the engine up, turn the air conditioning down. It's a rather hot 96 degrees outside. Um, you can see this is a really nice looking cabin at a glance, although I do see some resemblance, of course, that you might remind me of a Chevy, Chevy product, but I really have to look hard for it. Um, the design of the, the interior isn't personally my aesthetic. This screen here you can see is eight inches. It does include wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see you've got the cut and sewn theme design for the interior where you have the real leather stitching with the contrasting stitching, which is nice. It kind of goes over the instrument panel hood. You have stitching over here on the door panels, which is nice. You have an aluminum accented door handles. The window controls, they're one touch automatic for the front, one touch down for the back, but not one touch up. I kind of wish that Cadillac just made that all one touch uh, for up and down for all four. And you can see this steering wheel. This is the upgraded V-series steering wheel that you get with these seats. You can see they have some nice carbon fiber. I wish it was a flat bottom, but you can see there's a little placard here that shows what production or what VIN number your vehicle is. The last, I believe, six of the VIN to kind of make this car even feel even more special. You can see this automatic version includes paddles on the wheels. You have these this power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, which is also a nice addition. That comes standard. You also have a heated wheel. Well, not that I'd want to use that right now in this 96 degree heat. And unlike the regular V that I drove last year, you have this fully digital 12 inch display, which definitely looks really good. Um, when you go between the different drive modes here, you can see this is the V mode. If I go into the different drive mode here, I go to sport, you can see it'll actually change the, the way the screen looks. And you can kind of customize this based on what you'd like. So for right now, the car's screen is not changing because I have to go here into the very end and go to the display theme and click link to drive mode. You can see once I do that, the gauge display completely changes. Uh, and this is what the touring mode looks like. This is what the sport mode looks like. You can hear the exhaust baffles open up. Uh, and that one's probably my favorite looking one. And then this is what the track mode looks like 
where it kind of puts the tack right at the very top. So it's a little bit slow to change the way that looks, but I love how it's now a digital display. Definitely makes it feel a lot more premium uh, this year with this new uh, digital display. Now over here you can see this screen hasn't really changed. Uh, it does have a center home button there. This is the screen itself. It's a really quick and responsiveness. It also has embedded, of course, GPS. Uh, which is nice if you don't feel like using the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto. I just think the screen's a little bit small. The larger CT5V Blackwing has the bigger 10 and a quarter inch display, uh, which definitely looks a little bit nicer. You have some piano black plastic trim here. You have dual zone climate control. And unlike the old ATS-V, which had those touch sensitive buttons, you can see GM has gone back to conventional hard buttons, which is nice. You have a wireless phone charging pad here, which is good with the wireless phone charging. The, this electronic shifter here controls the 10-speed automatic when I put the vehicle into reverse. No 360 camera on this model here. I'll have to see if the larger uh, CT5 offers that feature. Uh, but the graphics you can see are pretty good. Uh, there's a volume knob over here. You can also control this system here from this control dial if you don't want to use the touch screen. And you can see your cup holders here, some genuine exposed carbon fiber, uh, your drive mode selector is over here. And then the one thing that I really like the performance traction management system, that's something that I had an issue accessing when I was driving a lot of V-Series in the past. Before you had to double tap the stability control off button in a certain sequence to shut it off. Now you can see there's a button here or a toggle. This will basically adjust it to whatever mode you'd like. And it's very quick and it's right there on the steering wheel. There's also a dedicated V button here, which will put you into the V drive mode, which is customizable. You can change the drive modes here on this screen to whatever you'd like to custom tailor it to. Uh, and Everything else is just very user friendly. I also have a nice heads up display, which looks good. Uh, the rear view mirror, you can see this doesn't offer the rear view camera mirror, but I like how it's the frameless rear view mirror. You have LED lighting in the cabin. And then you can see the headliner has this really nice micro suede, microfiber suede accents, which is good. The seats, like I mentioned earlier, are like 18 way adjustable. You can also adjust this bolster and this bolster on how tightly you want them to squeeze you. You can see you can put those racing strap seat belts through these little holes here. And they also offer a power lumbar massage, which is very unexpected. These are $5,000 extra, but in this gray two-tone with the red, it looks fantastic. Um, and I think it's a really nice upcharge. Definitely get that if you guys plan to track this vehicle. Oh, looking over here, the glove box is actually pretty big. It's damped, lined with felt. There's a light inside over there. And then if you open this up, you can see pretty decent center console. You have your USB-C and your standard USB-A port uh, right there. And then down here, you can see heated and cooled seats, which is nice. There's surprisingly some hard buttons here where this vehicle is missing something. That's your lane departure, your lane keeping system. And if you guys want adaptive cruise control, that is available if you guys go for the automatic model, which actually comes standard. It's part of a $900 uh, driver assistance package, but Super Cruise is not available. So overall, the interior feels a little bit on the snug side, um, but it has most of the tech features that you want. It just doesn't really wow you unless you're looking at the seats. This is really the only element of the interior that kind of wows you. So if you're trying to sell this vehicle to your spouse as being family friendly, I regret to inform you, you might have a little bit of a problem because even though the CT4V Blackwing has four doors, that is nice. The legroom back here is definitely small, even for the segment. Cadillac says you only get around 33.7 inches of legroom. 33.7 is less than what you'd find in something like a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic. You can see because it's rear wheel drive, you have a really big center drive shaft tunnel here. Uh, which does eat into space for middle passengers. At least you do have rear seat vents, uh, just a regular 12 volt power outlet, no USB ports back here. But you can see my tester with the sky cool gray interior also has the suede front seat backs, which definitely make it look nice. It also has the V logo here that reminds your rear seat passengers that you're in the special Blackwing model. If you fold down this armor, so you get two cup holders here. Uh, and the seats themselves are pretty comfortable and supportive. No heated back seats. You can see this mini perforated quilted leather definitely looks nice. And this is probably the interior color combination I would go with. I would probably just add in the red seat belts to match the red trim and stitching that you find in this interior. <laughs> All right, so now we are in the CT4V Blackwing and God bless Cadillac for saving the manuals because we're driving the manual transmission first. I've got my editor next to me right now. He probably would buy one of these. It's like, it's very much a him car because it's a stick, it's twin turbo V6, it's a four door sedan. And it sounds good. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> this transmission, or this engine actually sounds a lot better than the engine that was in the ATS-V, which is the same engine, but you can hear Cadillac tune the exhaust a lot more for this. And it has those crackles and pops. Um, and it also has active rev matching. So we'll go to second there. Ooh. 
Wow, very impressive. But I will say that just like the old V6, you do need to shift a little earlier than the 68 Redline because if you go past it, I wanted to shift at seven, it will cut the power pretty annoyingly. Um, and it kind of just, it's almost like a slap on the wrist. It's like, don't do that. Don't rev too hard, which is the opposite of what you can find in like the M3's engine, which wants you to rev, but dirty word there, you're not supposed to compare this to an M3 because Cadillac wants you to compare it to an M2, which I actually haven't had a chance to drive the M2 comp yet. That car's about to be replaced, but this definitely is far better than the CLA, the CLA 35 that I drove, which technically it competes with the 45, and the last Audi RS3. I love the way this car feels. I love how it's rear-wheel drive. I love how it puts the power down really well. Actually, I want to try another launch because I was impressed for a rear-drive car. It's got a limited slip diff. Stepped out a little bit last it, time. It did, actually. That one was better. Is this really rear wheel drive? <laughs> it puts the power down like an all wheel drive car. That's impressive. So every, all of you out there who are complaining that Cadillac wasn't offering all wheel drive on the black wings, I can tell you that the CT4 V black wing does not need it. This feels incredible. I mean, this is technically still built on the alpha platform, which is a wonderful place to start. It's an update of the ATS V, which was already a, a wonderful car, driving car. The rest of the car was kind of meh to me. Um, but we'll talk about, you know, the interior, I t or I'll talk about the interior at a later time. This is the ultimate driver's car. Cadillac wanted this car to be the best track car they've ever built. And we're going to get out into the track later. We're driving the car on the street first. I'm going to switch into an automatic version because Cadillac expects the take rate to be roughly 50-50. Um, which I wouldn't be surprised if more people chose the manual because this is definitely catering to an enthusiast. I mean, just like the ATS-V, the steering in this car out on the road is just perfect. It has the perfect amount of weight. It has great feel. The cha the suspension stays super flat. Like this is a car that really has high limits and you can feel that even on the road. It's a wonderful, wonderfully balanced car. Does it feel nicer than the last M3 that I drove? Again, I don't want to compare it to an M3, but it's the same size. Um, it feels about on par with that M3. I haven't driven the M3 with a stick yet, but the M3 comp that I drove was really, really good as well. But I'll tell you, this one is a lot less expensive. And if you can kind of get past the fact that, you know, it's a Cadillac, it's not, you know, a Mercedes or a BMW or an Audi. And Cadillac has a long racing history. This, this car will impress you. It is the last V cars to offer, or to be powered by gas. Cadillac says their next generation of V cars will be, will be going all electric. And the fact that they're keeping it with a stick is fantastic. But the stick is good. Let's hop into the automatic because I do want to compare what that is like out on the street. All right, so now we are in the automatic version with their 10 speed. The first thing I want to try, the launch control. <laughs> Not bad. This one had a little more wheel hopping than the manual. Actually, the manual kind of got a little sideways, but it didn't feel quite as brutal. What do you think, Rob? It definitely... <laughs> Off the line, it didn't feel as sharp. Honestly, I would be, wouldn't be surprised if the six-speed didn't jump out a couple car, yeah, car lengths, a couple noses out right off in first gear. It's interesting, that third gear felt really, really shortly geared. Yeah, well, this is this has four more gears than the manual, yeah. so it, it's definitely going to feel different One when it two, accelerates. Though, it felt pretty tall, though, still. So. Yeah, I just noticed that it didn't want to rev higher. Yeah. Um, the manual allowed you to rev up to around 3,500. This really only settled at around 2, 2,500, maybe, maybe a little over 2. Um, so that's probably why the computer software must be just limiting it because they, they don't want it to burn out the tires too much. Remember, this car is only rear-wheel drive, so Cadillac still claims that the manual is the slower option. They said this should be around 3.9 seconds while the... Um, I don't know. I bet, I bet if we can get the launch right on the stick, it'll be close. It might be. It'll be close. Let's go ahead and try it one more time here. Nobody behind me. I've got the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Ready. Less wheel spin here. Mm -hmm. That felt stronger. That did feel good. Um, oh, and you can feel the, or you can hear the burbles and crackles from the exhaust when it shifts. It's a quick shifting transmission. Um, but yeah, I, we're going to be out on the track later and we're going to test out the 0 to 60 performance on the track. 
because uh, I do want to see if this can do better or match Cadillac's claim of 3.9 for this one, 4.2 for the manual, which is pretty respectable performance. Remember, these are rear-wheel drive cars, and this car definitely on the street, you can tell it's rear-wheel drive, but it puts the power down really well for a rear-wheel drive car. It's very similar to the M3 that I drove with the automatic, the competition model, which really put the power down well. So we're definitely at an era or a point where you don't necessarily need all wheel drive for dry performance traction. Um, you probably do if you live in you know areas where it's always wet, it's colder, you probably want the all wheel drive grip, but for something like this, uh, this car is perfectly capable on the street with just having rear wheel drive and having almost 500 horsepower. Now, I actually wanna talk about the drive modes because I didn't do that in the manual version. I have it in its V mode now. If I push the V button on the steering wheel here, it'll go into a touring mode. Uh, and you can see it changes out the display over here. We've got this fully digital display now as opposed to the last CT4 that I drove, which had the analog and slightly digital, which looked really old school and dated. This definitely looks a lot nicer. Uh, and you notice when it's in this mode, the steering gets a little bit lighter. The suspension goes into a softer mode. The transmission gets you know, tuned to seek a top gear a little bit more. Uh, and it's definitely a daily drivable car. This car is comfortable uh, when you want it to be, but it can get really, really um, aggressive when you want it to be in its uh, sports setting. So I think that's a really great combination. I mean, you expect that when you're paying, you know, $60,000 plus for a vehicle like this, you want it to have that dual personality uh, because it needs to. You need to be able to drive this on the road and drive this on the track, uh, which is why Cadillac is having us start on the road because this is where most people are going to spend their time. Now, uh, this, in terms of just the interior and just driving this vehicle, I find it to be pretty comfortable. I like these upgraded seats. These seats are $5,000 extra. They're also, they include a lumbar massage, they're heated and cooled, memory they adjust in like 18 different ways. These seats are definitely worth it. I also like this gray seat combination. This is kind of what they're, what they call their, their cool sky gray seat. It kind of looks more like a white seat. It's a two-tone. You have some white on the uh, door panels and this red seat belt is extra. It also adds like five horsepower, right, Rob, when you have the, when you have the red seat belt. Uh, and in terms of visibility, the one thing I'm noticing, the old ATS-V had a hood that bulged out a little more. It had these functional extractor vents. And you can see for this new one, they don't have that anymore. And I kind of miss it. The hood looks a little ordinary. Before the ATS-V had a bigger hood bulge, it made me feel like I was driving a more special car. Uh, this is definitely a little bit more stealthy, especially in this black color combination. Although with the carbon fiber package, it really improves the look of this car. I'd highly recommend it. It's just pricey for $7,000. Now, in terms of just driving it normally here, this car is available with adaptive cruise control. It has automatic emergency braking. Super Cruise, however, is not available on the Blackwing versions. You can get it on the regular V um, as part of like a Super Cruise option, but it's $900 extra and it's included with the automatic transmission when you guys go in. If you guys want the, drive, the adaptive cruise, you cannot get it with the manual, which is kind of disappointing, but I figured, our Cadillac figures, most stick shift drivers probably don't care for the adaptive cruise option. This also does have lane keep assist. The one thing I really appreciate is the performance traction management switch here on the stereo. Now, as before, where I had to push, double tap the mode button or the stability control off button and then double tap it a certain sequence so it would finally get into this. Now it finally just allows me to switch it put it in exactly the mode that I want. There's like race two, race one, sport, and then a dry mode, uh, a wet mode as well. So I think that is a big change that they made that I really appreciate. Uh, and it shows that Cadillac is very much listening to their uh, customer base uh, because the people who buy this are the pure enthusiasts. They are gonna buy this with the stick, although the 10 speed is not bad, but I think on the street, I would definitely go for the stick unless you're constantly dealing with rush hour traffic. Obviously the 10 speed is the more convenient choice. Uh, but it's also, for me, after driving the manual, the less satisfying choice. Accelerate to start. Okay. Ready? Three point nine seconds is what the car just told us. Although I just realized I'm not in track mode. <laughs> Try it again. Oh, well, we can do better then. Let's see if I can do better. All right. Try it one more time. Accelerate to start. Ready? Launch control. Ooh. Got 4.1 there. How'd you do worse in I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little more wheel spin this time, but... Uh, try one more. <laughs> it's almost straight up around the corner. Yeah, we'll try it one more time. It is somewhat consistent, but yeah, I'm surprised it did a little bit worse there. Last run, let's see what this car can do. Four point 
too there. But there is more wheel spin this time. So typical with a rear wheel drive car, um, you need to get the launch right because the first launch we got in touring mode was 3.9 <laughs> seconds, but we also had no wheel spin. <laughs> so. That's interesting. I wonder if the traction control, because of touring mode, just lets it, you know, well, you know, whatever. Maybe you'll do better, maybe you'll do worse. <laughs> but still, this is pretty respectable performance, but you're, uh, I don't know, like, I, I think the Audi RS3 is probably faster than this because of its five cylinder dual clutch and all wheel drive. So, Cadillac wants you to compare it to those all wheel drive monsters, uh, but this is pretty comparable to an M3 with, a, with a, a stick shift, probably. But yeah, I'm actually, I was hoping this would be closer to the mid threes, but the CT5 V is the one that's in the mid threes with the automatic. I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna do a zero to 60 right now. Um, not, not the time, like I'll, I'll come in back and I'll do that by itself, but right now we'll just do the drag race. Okay, do you wanna do a quick intro for it? Yes, one second. Cadillac says that the automatic is technically the faster option. Well, we've got an empty track, we've got the manual and the auto side by side, so let's go ahead and drag race them. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Ready? You say it. My launch control is unavailable. Great. All right, ready. Yep. Three, two, one, go. for the win though. All right, so Cadillac has a pretty rich racing heritage. They've been racing, like I said, since 1949. So it's very appropriate for them to bring us out to a racetrack to drive the new Blackwing models. And of course, I'm starting out my day in the CT4 V Blackwing in the 10-speed automatic, simply because on the track, I would prefer to be in an automatic because I'm, I'm mostly trying to focus on driving the vehicle properly. This is my first time at VIR. And I can say right off the bat that the CT4V feels extremely capable out on the track. You've got incredible brakes, incredible chassis, great steering, plenty of power. And the car just feels well set, set up for track usage. Oh, listen to the way that sounds. This thing just pulls and pulls and pulls. I mean, it has nearly 500 horsepower. It doesn't surprise me at all. But the stability of this chassis, you can really tell that this vehicle is the Alpha platform. I mean, this is also underpinning the Camaro. And everything that I liked about the ATS-V is basically just been improved for this new version. And the beauty about this car is you can take it out on the, the track and drive it on the street home and it'll do that for you. I mean, the way it turns in is so sharp. The way the transmission responds out here, I didn't really love it on the street, but here out on the track, it does a really good job of staying in the gear that I want it to be in. But this thing is rear wheel drive, but it puts the power down like an all wheel drive car. Foot to the floor here, it's like, ooh. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not used to this track, so I'm just like taking, <laughs> taking my time being a little more conservative just because I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the limits of the car are is just yet. I'm learning that as we go. And here there's the tires starting to let go a little bit. I've got the traction management system in inactive right now. So it's all the nannies are turned on and this car is very confidence inspiring. I just wish I knew this track a little bit better. You're keeping up with them just fine. <laughs> Remember, this is the smaller, lighter option. I'll be driving the CT5V tomorrow. And this is probably the one that Cadillac wants you to do if you're planning to do track day stuff all the time. This is the most track cap capable sedan they've ever done. <laughs> what, what a riot. I mean, I drove, I drove the new TLX Type S out on at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. And this definitely feels like a step above. I mean, it better be for an extra $10,000, right? 
But you know, when I first drove the CT4 in regular versions and just the regular V, I wasn't that impressed, but I have to say the Blackwing model takes it up to the next level. And this is exactly what you expect from a V model Cadillac out on the track. <laughs> so after spending the day driving the all-new CT4 V Blackwing, Cadillac claimed that this is their most track-capable model, and I have to agree with them. This is a car that seriously is a track-built car straight from the showroom floor. And whether you guys go for the automatic or for the manual model, you can't really go wrong with either. Personally, for me, if I wasn't planning to track the car every weekend, I'd probably go with the manual. The manual is the better option on the street. It's just more pure. It's more exciting. The automatic definitely isn't bad. On the track, I definitely prefer to the automatic model because of the ease of use with it. You don't have to worry about the shifting. However, with the rev matching function, the no lift shift function, the fact that you are offered with a stick shift, that's, that's something that's dying in the entire segment. It really shows that Cadillac wants to appeal to enthusiasts. And keep in mind, Cadillac also has a CT5 V Blackwing, which I'll be driving tomorrow. So be sure to come back on August 10th for my full driving impressions on the bigger version with that supercharged V8. However, this is the model that's smaller, that's a little bit lighter, that's a little bit more approachable out on the track and on the road for those of you who want a smaller track weapon like this. And really, this is the last generation of V-series cars that's going to be gas-powered. So Cadillac is doing it right with their last gas-powered cars by offering it with a stick, keeping it rear-wheel drive, keeping it simple, keeping it pure. And really, when it comes down to the price, because you really want to compare this car to a BMW M3, which starts at around $70,000 for the BMW. Cadillac has you pay around $59.9 for the base six-speed manual version at around $3,100 for the automatic transmission model. This is where the CT4 V Blackwing is a little bit of a tweener because this is the same starting price as a BMW M2, which has roughly 70 less horsepower and roughly 90 more horsepower than something like the CLA 45, which also has the same starting price. These particular examples here that I'm showing you are well over $80,000 for the fully loaded versions, which again, keep them right in line with something like the M2 or the CLA 45. AMG. So really, if you guys are looking for the ultimate track weapon sedan with a six-speed manual, this one, I can confidently say, would go at the very top of my list. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Cadillac CT4 V Blackwing. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.